Much of the scenery in the Ralston district is quite striking, with mountains, sandstone cliffs and settled valleys creating interesting contrasts in the landscape. The Ralston district is also the home of a remarkable Australian. Some years ago, Sid Cadwell left his outer Sydney nursery and settled in the district. Here, he has propagated and grown a magnificent collection of Australian plants. And here he lives in contentment and in harmony with the animals and birds that are his daily companions. Around the hospitality of the open fire in Sid's cottage, I spoke to him about some of his life's work. Sid, it's about 12 years since I saw you last, uh, when you owned a native plant nursery at Annengrove in Sydney's Hills district. That'll what be right. prompted you to um, head west? <laughs> well, I found, I find it, I couldn't grow the plants down that they wanted to grow. Uh, of course of the humidity and one thing and then the rates was going up all the time the place was just getting too dear you couldn't stay there it was impossible and why did you choose this part of the state to come to well i'd been past here many many times from collecting trips and every time I went by i'd say what a place for growing wildflowers and has that proved to be correct yes it has and uh, what are the main types of plants do you grow here and for what sort of uh, purpose do you grow them well i'm growing the wild tars for seed that's, that's what I grow them for, and to learn more about them, of course. But you wouldn't have to learn more about them. Ah, oh, everyone's, the got, everyone's got something to learn. You reckon? Well, I remember at Annan Grove that the nursery was always full of native birds. Mm -hmm. so what are some of the best plants to use in a home garden to attract birds? Well, the whole, all the proteaceae, the grevilleas, the hakeys, the whole lot of those. They're all good for bird life, a lot of the gums, eucalyptus. Uh, your property's uh, dedicated as a wildlife refuge. That's What's right. What's the purpose of that? Well, I want to learn more about the kangaroos and that, and raising them and a the whole lot of them. I don't like seeing people running around shooting everything. And that, right now, wildlife refuge, everything's protected here, birds and a whole lot. Doesn't matter what they are, they're all protected. I accompanied Sid and one of his pet kangaroos, Kuma, on an inspection of his plant collection. The animals get a bit used to uh, smell and voice, I think, don't you? Yes, there's no doubt about that. They get used to your voice, for sure and certain. I think Kuma doesn't like me, actually. No, probably not. The propagating house is really at the heart of any nursery or arboretum type activity. And here Sid showed me some of the plants he was working with. Well, it's terrific. Look all the healthy. Is this just potted up in natural soil from around That's right, there? there's no fertiliser. And what about this little uh, ice pogan, is it? Yeah, that's right. Well, do you pull the bud off that at that size? No, let bit? him go, let him go. It doesn't drain too much no. of the developing roots? No. Does uh, Kuma eat any of the seedlings? No, never. Doesn't she? No. She weed them, get the weeds at them. She must be a very selective feeder. <laughs> Many of Sid's most successful plants have been established on a dam wall and on the slopes of a site levelled in preparation for the construction of a Pizé house. This looks an interesting bank here. What on earth have you got down there? Yeah, well, that's Perinda. Perinda Royal Mantle. Perinda Royal Mantle. Now, is that how many plants is on that bank? There's one, two, three, perhaps five, no more. Magnificent, isn't it? Yeah. Could always, almost be used for sort of soil conservation. That's right. Of course it could. I guess this is really what we're on about here, isn't it? Beauty and usefulness in, com in combination. That's right. Yellow box and clematis. That's right. The honey from yellow box, the timber from yellow box, and the beauty of a Australian native flower. The birds would be in that too. Are they? I reckon they would. In the nesting material. That's yeah. right. What species of clematis is it? I don't know. Don't rightly know. Looks a bit like clematis glycinoides. I think that goes around here. <laughs> Sid, this is a magnificent stand of scribbly gums. They're one of my favourite trees. Yes, yes. Did you tell me that your pro property was named That's after them? Yeah, to me, after Aboriginal for white gums. I can't understand why more people don't grow them horticulturally. They're a beautiful tree. Yes. And the, the fascinating patterns that the insects make in uh, getting under the bark and crawling along, I can never understand how they get to the end of their run, turn round, go back again, and then leave the bark before they get back to go. Have you ever no, noticed that? No, I've noticed it, but how they work these things out is something I just don't know. Uh, do you know, have you ever seen the insect that larvae does that track on the no, tree? No, never. No, they're pretty hard to find. I yeah. found some out in the Mullion Range once. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah I reckon... transported them in a matchbox into my arboretum and put them on the scribbly gum, and the next year there were scribbles on it. Yeah. So I reckon it was the right insect. Must have been. Yeah. The sandy soil of Sid's property 
obviously suited many species, including the Western Australian Geraldton wax. I asked him whether he had found Geraldton wax easy to grow. No. How do you grow food or cutting? Cuttings. Why do you say they're not easy? Well, they're temperamental. They don't. They won't stand wet feet. Won't they? No way. No, no. They won't it stand is wet possible feet. to spend hours with Sid Cadwell looking at his plants and at what he has achieved and to never cease to be amazed at the health of everything growing on his property. However, he had left the best till last. Set slightly apart from his main area was his Waratah plantation. At the time of our visit, it was in full bloom. Even balanced precariously on the top of our vehicle, it was impossible for cameraman Mark Bennett to do justice to the display. Sid, in all my years of looking at Australian plants, this is one of the most extraordinary sights I've ever seen. Yeah. Roughly how many Waratahs have you got planted here? About 3,000. And are you still planting? Yes. And how long have they been in? These have been here behind us about four years old. Only four years. And what yeah. sort of cultural treatment do you give them? The disc once in a while, no fertiliser, no water. The disc? What do you mean, disc house? Yeah, that's right. Up in between the rows? That's right, yeah. And what are you growing them for? Just for seed. What about the beauty of them? Oh, well, yeah, that comes into it too. That's a bonus. It certainly is a bonus. Sid, uh, if it's not too rude, how old are you? About over 70. And how many years ahead of you? About 30 at least. There is so much to see at Sid Cadwell's that I would like to take you back there again. If you have enjoyed this series, I hope you will take the trouble to let the station know by writing or ringing. And if you know of any good tree stories for a second series, please let us know about them too. Thank you for watching.